thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of Job, Job chapter 42, we're coming to the end of the book of Job, and in the first few verses in this chapter, Job is speaking about the power of God, verse 2, how no plan of God could be frustrated, he has heard from God the last few chapters, God has spoken, and he has broken before the Lord. Job chapter 42 verse 6 says that he was in sackcloth and ashes. That was a symbol of repentance, brokenness. And when I was reading this, it reminded me of how we today, are, how we are to approach God. Like Job, we suffer, we go through a lot of things in life. Like Job, we question God, why me? Why is this happening? Then God will speak to us through his word, by his Holy Spirit, through our conscience and our minds and hearts. And if we're truly a child of God, we come to him just as Job did in sackcloth and ashes, brokenness. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 tells us that godly sorrow leads to repentance. When David sinned against God with Bathsheba and her husband Uriah, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he was convicted and he penned a couple of psalms, penitent psalms like Psalm 32 and Psalm 51. And in Psalm 51, verse 17, David said, A broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. The late Billy Graham, whenever he would have evangelistic crusades for over 60 years, oftentimes after the crusade was over, he would have a song played for people to come to the altar to make a confession of faith for Christ. And the song was called, Just As I Am. How do we come to the Lord just as we are? We come to him as sinners. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 and Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2. You can read those scripture verses when you have a chance. And it speaks basically about how God is close to those who are broken, those who tremble at his word. I am so thankful to God in my personal life as I'm getting older. Scripture verses like Matthew chapter 11 verse 19, where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are told, was a friend of sinners and tax collectors. Oftentimes when Christ walked this earth, the problem he had the most with was the religious people of his day. Those who thought that they were righteous in themselves and what they did. Looked down at the sins of others. But those who were truly broken, contrite, those are the ones that truly got to know the Lord and love him. Luke chapter 7 verse 47 tells us that. The biblical principle, those who love the Lord the most are, see, are the ones who see they've been forgiven of the most. We need to wait on the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Something I'm learning also as you get older is patience. We live in a, what I call a microwave generation where everybody has to have everything right away. Their foods have to be from, say, McDonald's. There's a McDonald's not too far from where I live. Drive by there and the drive-in is so packed that you can't even get around the cars in the, in the street. Nobody cooks no more. I work with kids, teenagers, they get into relationships and there's no waiting to third, fourth date. Everything is consummated. Sexual relationships are done even on the first time they go out together. 30 years ago in 1992, I met my wife and I could remember she was a virgin and she wanted to remain one until she got married. And she used to have a little saying, no ring, no thing. It was funny, it was cute, but now looking back, I commend her, I respect her for her uh, virtuousness, her humility, and her convictions. And I tell my two daughters, I have two daughters, I say, look at your mother as an example of what a woman should be like. She would not cave in to the pressure of, uh, you know, my desires or what I wanted. And I had to learn patience. And we did wait till we got married. Because when you love somebody, you're patient with them. And if we love the Lord, we, we will be patient, we'll wait on him. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 tells us, wait on the Lord and you will renew your strength. Unfortunately today, everybody has to have everything right away, instant gratification. So my friends, as you're going through trials and tribulations, you have to wait on God. You have to be patient. In Matthew chapter 26, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was in the garden of Gethsemane, more than one time, more than one time he prayed to his father to take the cup away from him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you can read there also how Paul 
more than one time asked for a thorn to be removed from his flesh. Both times the situation was not given to them. The, their petitions were not granted because God had other plans involved in, involved in both their lives. And that biblical principle in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, where it says after Paul asked three times that the thorn be removed from his side, and it was probably bad eyesight, Galatians chapter 6, verse 11 says that Paul wrote with big letters. His letters were written with very big letters. Probably be persecution from the Jews. You can read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, at the end of the chapter, how much persecution he went through for his faith in Christ. But he learned that God's power in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, is made perfect in weakness. You see, when we are weak, that's when God is strong. This is what Job is learning here at the end of the, chat, of the book of Job. He is learning that God is powerful. You read in the first, few, first five verses of Job chapter 42, Job speaks about the power of God. He's in sackcloth and ashes because he's broken before this holy God. Sometimes we have this misconception view of God and who he is. Even as Christians, I know I'm guilty of it. There's been times in my Christian life when I've wanted God to be like the jack in the box or the genie in the bottle and pop out and do whatever I ask him to do. And when I didn't get what I wanted, get discouraged and frustrated and angry. My friends, we have to learn that God is sovereign. No plan of God, Job 42 verse 2, can be frustrated. We need to conform to his image. We are not to conform God to our image and what we want. Yes, we go to the Lord with our petitions and our prayers, but we have to sometimes wait on God. Charles Stanley, who is a well-known pastor here in America, often used to say that God will answer your prayers in three ways, yes, no, or wait. And he would say that God's waiting rooms are often our best classrooms. You learn the most in your Christian life by waiting on God, being patient, enduring suffering. And remember, as Galatians, um, as Romans chapter 14, verse 23 tells us, whatever is not done in faith is sin. How many times I worry, get anxiety over situations in my life, anticipatory anxiety. I think we all have it. We all struggle with it. But whatever is not done by faith is sin. As I said, the older I get, the more sinful I see I really been. When I was younger, I used to think sin was the biggies, murder, adultery. But unbelief is a sin. But that's who Christ came for. Acknowledge it, my friends, your struggles with sin. Confess them, and God is faithful and just. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ on social media who see this devotional video today, Lord. Remind us as we read in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, that we have an advocate with you, the, Jesus Christ, our representative, our lawyer, so to speak, who comes to you without sins, and through him we have forgiveness. Help us, Lord God, to be humble, wait on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Take care, my friends, and God bless you.